I'm Tyler from Nelly Security. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 mistakes that beginners make when setting up a surveillance system for the very first time. Now maybe you've done the research, you've saved up the money, and now you're ready to get started. Well, hold on a second. Before you jump into the wonderful world of CCTV, let us give you some friendly advice. Now, why should you trust us? Well, we here at Nelly Security have dedicated our lives to the art of surveillance. We've put together thousands of surveillance systems for a variety of situations. We understand the complexities involved in picking out equipment for each unique circumstance. But more than all of that, you can trust us because we've made a ton of mistakes along the way. And we want to help you avoid those same mistakes. Let's go ahead and jump right into the top of the list at number 10. The 10th most common mistake people make when setting up a surveillance system for the first time is expecting every camera to be able to read license plates and facial features from any distance. When piecing together a surveillance system for the first time, you might be tempted to throw any old camera up on the roof and expect it to do just too much. For instance, you may wonder, why isn't my camera accurately capturing images and video of license plates? Or, why can't I recognize the faces of the people in my security videos? Here's the thing, you can't expect every camera you install to accomplish every task. These cameras really work best when you fine-tune the settings of each camera to do exactly what you want it to do. You also need to take your camera into consideration. Because not all cameras are equal, and some cameras are better equipped for certain functions than others. So before you start investing in cameras, ask yourself what your final goal is going to be. If it's to read license plates, then you'll be far better off investing in a security camera designed from the ground up for the sole purpose of recognizing and recording license plates, like our NSC LPR 832BT1, for example. This camera not only takes excellent pictures of license plates, but it also pulls them into a database for you to search through later. Now this 2 megapixel bullet really is a great security camera for certain purposes, but not for reading license plates. Understanding the strengths and limitations of your cameras before you start piecing together your system is really going to save you from a lot of headaches later down the road. And that's a great segue into mistake number 9. Thinking image enhancement software is actually a thing. So maybe this 2 megapixel bullet camera didn't get great shots of those faces and license plates, but I can always enhance them later to be able to see some of the finer detail, right? I mean, I guess this one makes sense. We see it all the time in movies and TV shows. Let's magnify it, see if we can get a reflection off our eye. Good, good. Reverse the image. His glasses. There's a reflection. Yeah, that's not a thing. Now, all of our systems do have digital zoom, but you have to understand that you can only blow up the pixels that are already there in the image. No image software in the world can magically produce new pixels. So here's a picture from that 2 megapixel camera. And here it is blown up. See? Just an ordinary pixelated picture. No magic here. A key takeaway is this. Be prepared. Once your footage is recorded, you can't go back and give it a higher resolution. So if you know that you're going to want to capture as much detail as you can, you'll need to invest in higher resolution cameras from the start. Here, compare this 2 megapixel footage with this 4K footage. Now, you may not be able to reproduce a reflection off of an eyeball with this camera, but it's still a pretty dang good image. Now, all of this is helpful for viewing your feeds during the daytime, but what about at night? If you want crisp, clear images like this 24-7, you're going to have to keep your camera's infrared abilities in mind. Now this brings us to mistake number 8, which is blocking your camera's IR LED lights. If you want your security cameras to work in situations where there is little to no light, you're going to need a camera with IR or infrared capabilities. When the lights go out or the sun goes down, these cameras switch on their own onboard IR LED lights to brighten up the environment around them. But here's the catch. IR light is invisible to the human eye. So if you or I were in a room with an IR camera, it would appear to be pitch black, 
In reality, the room is bright with light that only the camera can see. Now, here's why this is important. When you install your camera, you have to make sure to install it in a position so that the IR lights have free range. If there is anything blocking the LEDs, then your camera is pretty much going to be useless anytime the sun is down or the lights are off. Look, this is me installing a camera in our production room, aimed toward our computer. I didn't want it to be super obvious that the camera was there, so I tried to position it behind this little nook here. So here I am sitting at the computer. The camera's placement isn't ideal, because half the field of view is taken up by that wall, but we'll get to that in a bit. What I want you to notice here is what happens when I turn the lights off. That image is totally washed out because all of that infrared light is immediately bounced off the wall back to the camera before it even reaches anything else in the room. This is known as IR flooding. Now I can tell someone just walked into the room because I saw the light from the door and I see them passing the lights on the computer, but I have no idea what they're doing in there. Another issue you might experience when it comes to your infrared LED lights being blocked is IR glare. This is when your IR lights are reflected off of a nearby object back onto the lens causing a very foggy image. So here, let's move the camera over just a couple of inches so that the IR lights have free range. Since we typically install cameras in broad daylight, and since we can't see infrared light, it's easy to forget about this step, but it's so important if you really want to get the most out of your camera. Ah, see there, that's so much better. I can see just about everything I need to see in this room, and if someone were to walk in, I'd be able to see exactly what they're up to. If you really can't find a place to install your camera, where the LED lights are able to emit infrared properly, don't worry. You can always pick up a wall mount or a junction box. This will give you the ability to extend your camera, potentially allowing your LED infrared lights to have plenty of room to shine. Now, let's move on to mistake number seven. Mistake number seven is, there is no mistake number seven. You see, seven is a lucky number, and we didn't want to associate mistakes with luck, so we're skipping it. Besides, we had writer's block, and we could really only come up with nine mistakes. On to mistake number six. Forgetting to weatherproof your connections. If you want to install a security camera outside, it's a no-brainer that you're going to need a camera, kind of like this four megapixel mini PTZ here. With its IP66 weatherproof rating, this thing can withstand crazy weather conditions. But here's what's not so much a no-brainer. Even if your camera is top-notch, IP66 rated, weatherproof and life-proof like this one here, the ethernet cable you use to connect your camera to your network probably isn't. But here's the good news. Weatherproofing your connections is super easy. It's even easier than forgetting to weatherproof your connections. If you buy a weatherproof security camera from Nelly Security, we'll send you one of these handy weatherproof sealing grommets. Once you've twisted the grommet into place on your camera's connection, you're golden. Your security camera is now ready to brave the toughest of storms. Alright, are you ready to jump into the second half of this video? Here are the top five mistakes people make when piecing together a surveillance system for the very first time. The fifth most common mistake is wasting space in their camera's field of view. Our IP bullet cameras that we carry here at Nelly Security are very convenient for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons is its adjustability. The camera sits on a ball head, so you can very easily angle the camera in pretty much any way that you can think of. The downside to this is that it can be easy to just throw a camera up on the wall without paying much attention to where it's pointing. Do you see anything wrong with this camera feed? Well, it depends. If my goal was to get footage of my friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, then I nailed that installation. However, if I was at all interested in what was going on in that parking lot, then this really wasn't the ideal position for this camera. And here's why. While this camera has a whopping 78 degree horizontal field of view, it only has a vertical field of view of 42 degrees. That's pretty narrow to begin with. So right away, I have a very limited amount of vertical space that I can use for my surveillance. But in this case, since about half the picture from this camera consists of the sky, I'm actually only using 21 degrees of the view field available to me. The other 21 degrees is just wasted space. 
To get the most value out of your security camera, make sure you're using it to its 100% fullest potential. If your vertical field of view is 42 degrees, make sure you're positioning the camera just right to where you're using all 42 of those degrees. Simple tweaks, such as tiny angle adjustments, can make a huge difference here. Another handy tip for these mini bullets is that you can also view them from a mobile application, like Height Connect or Guarding Vision. You may want to take advantage of that while installing the camera so that you don't have to keep walking back and forth from your computer or NVR to your installation site. And that's about it for number five. Let's move on to mistake number four, skimping on your cables. Cables can be one of the most frustrating aspects of piecing together your surveillance system. Depending on the amount of distance your wiring needs to cover, the price of your cables can quickly start to add up. Because of this, it can be really tempting to skimp on your cables, thinking the quality isn't really that important. It's just a way for power to get from point A to point B, you might say. My camera just needs a simple connection to the network. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. Cheaply made or homemade cables can lead to many issues down the road. You're investing too much into your surveillance system for you to let your guard down when it comes to your cables. So do your research and make sure the cables you get are just as high quality as the cameras themselves. For instance, there are many cables on the market that are constructed with copper clad. This results in much shorter cable runs and sometimes even a loss in video quality. So, especially if you're buying bulk cables or if your cable runs are over 100 feet, make sure you're using cables that are constructed with solid copper. However, on the other end of the spectrum, you can end up installing cables that are just too long. If you're trying to run one long cable from a security camera to a PoE switch on the other side of your property, you may find that the cable run is just too long for your power and data to travel. As a general rule, your cable's maximum distance when using power over ethernet is 100 meters or around 300 feet. If the distance between your camera and your PoE switch is greater than 300 feet, your best option is going to be to use a PoE repeater to boost your signal up to 600 feet. Cables are a crucial aspect to surveillance, but one of the leading causes of frustration. However, don't rush through this process. Picking up cheaply made or poorly wired cables can really cause your entire system to fail. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Out of the top 10 most common mistakes that new security camera installers make, two of them have to do with my cables. Maybe it would be best to just get rid of my cables altogether and go wireless. You, my friend, have fallen prey to mistake number three. The third most common beginner surveillance mistake is wanting wireless cameras everywhere. Now, there's nothing wrong with a wireless camera here and there. We offer a couple here at Nelly Security, and they really are great cameras that can add a lot to any surveillance system. But the key word there is add. If you're looking to build a whole system out of these cameras, you might want to think again. The most obvious reason is that wireless cameras are not nearly as reliable as hardwired cameras. Even with the best Wi-Fi signals, you're going to have lag and spotty coverage every once in a while, and there are even going to be blocks of time when you completely lose footage. Also, if your camera is totally wireless, another issue you're going to come across is having to change batteries probably more often than you realize. But they're really not all that bad. Wireless cameras can help you extend the range of your surveillance beyond what your cables are able to reach. They're also convenient, as you can carry them around and easily change their location if you need to. But these cameras work best as supplements to your hardwired security system, not as replacements. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the second most common mistake beginners make when setting up a surveillance system for the very first time. Not ordering a big enough recorder. When just starting out with CCTV, don't limit yourself. Just because you're only getting four 2 megapixel cameras, doesn't mean you should settle for a 4-channel 2-megapixel NVR. Because once you get your equipment all set up, you're done. You can't add any more cameras to your recorder, and you can't upgrade to higher quality cameras. Once you get to the point where you're ready to start building up your system, you're going to have to invest in a whole new recorder. Instead, give yourself room to grow. If you're only starting out with 4 2-megapixel cameras, consider investing in an 8-channel 4K NVR. There may be a small extra cost up front, but you'll be saving yourself the cost later down the road of buying an entire new system. Trust us on this, we've seen it too many times. You always end up wanting more than you initially think you need. All right, we finally made it. Here is the number one surveillance mistake 
not ordering from Nelly Security. Nelly Security is the world's top source for new analog and IP security systems and surveillance equipment. But it's not our high quality products or competitive pricing that sets us apart. It's our world-class customer service. Our experts are on call Monday through Friday, eight to five to answer any security questions you may have or to walk you through any issue that may come up. If you run your own security business, we also have a set of tools just for you to help you thrive in your business. These tools include everything from custom branding and marketing materials to special dealer pricing. When you're ready to purchase your security equipment, there are many suppliers for you to choose from. But if you're looking for a company that cares about your surveillance needs, a company that will help you decide on just the right products for you, and a company that will work tirelessly to make sure you receive the technical support that you need, then you're looking for Nelly's Security. You know, scientific studies have shown that not ordering your security equipment from Nelly's causes a lot of buyer's remorse, frustration and headache, depression, and an overall lesser quality of life. Well, that was the top 10 surveillance mistakes to avoid when setting up your system for the very first time. If you feel prepared to go ahead and start piecing your system together, feel free to visit us at www.nellysecurity.com to browse our selection of high quality surveillance equipment. If you're not quite to that place yet, we get it. That's why we're here. Feel free to give us a call or send us an email. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook for more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.